I'll request my colleagues to kindly ensure that the journalists who are outside are asked to come in so that we may start the session. Friends, we now come to the final session of the National Editors Conference. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Sri Anand Swarupji, Additional Secretary and Director General, Labor Welfare in the Ministry of Labor and Employment, and also Sri A.K. Agarwal, Additional Secretary and DG, ESIC in the Ministry. As we are all aware, the Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana has been one of the most successful flagship schemes of the government, providing a social safety net for the very poor and giving them health benefits. Mr. Anand Swaroop has been the architect of this scheme, which now has been adopted by the World Bank as one of the best global practices and is being now advocated all over the world. Mr. Anand Swaroop will make a short presentation to explain the contours of the scheme and how it is being implemented, and then we will have the floor open for interaction. I now request Mr. Anil Swaroop to kindly make the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for those very kind words. I think the afternoon sessions in any case are very difficult ones, and when it happens to be the last one, it is even worse. But what do you expect of somebody in labor to deliver in the end I think thereafter the session gets closed. So with your with you apologies, I will tend to deliver something in front of you and then call it quits. I'll take you to the journey called RSPY, uh, briefly tell you about the context. I won't make a very long presentation. I'll try and finish it within 20 minutes so that you have sufficient time to ask questions. Uh, briefly about why health insurance. Uh, you all must be wondering why is Ministry of Labor doing health insurance. Even I'm wondering today, but we are doing something about it. What is RSPY? How is it different from any other scheme? This is something which I'll delve upon. Uh, we take pride in the fact that this scheme is very different from anything that has happened in this country. What has happened so far? How has this scheme been perceived? Uh, I have often felt that the baker calls his own cake pretty good, but it depends on whether the person who's consuming that cake, what is his impression about it. So we'll share with you some of the thoughts of those that are suffering this scheme, whether it's suffering, they're enjoying, they're relishing. We have had some evaluations and we'll share them with you. How is and what is the potential of the smart card? We do believe the smart card can really change the way we think. It is already changing the way it has happened in the field. And what are the challenges for the future? All is not hunky-dory with the scheme. We, we continue to face serious challenges, and that is how it is. This was the context in which the Honorable Prime Minister announced this scheme way back in 2007. Because uh, in, the, in the first 50 years since independence, not much had happened to this last segment of unorganized workers that constituted almost 430 million workers. Most of the focus, and all of you would be covered in that, whether EPO4, ESIC, covers this small segment of 6%. The rest of them, not many people thought about them, and probably the Prime Minister that in that context thought. And people have asked this question, why health insurance? Various researchers have clearly revealed that Health shocks are one of the primary reasons for indebtedness, and this chart clearly brings that out. And, and if you look at health insurance at the turn of the century, this was the scenario. Only the high-income decile people had health insurance cover. 3 to 4 percent only. Today it stands more than 25 percent. So past decade has been a decade of health insurance in India. It is happening, it is happening slowly, gradually, but steadily going up and up. When we evolved this scheme way back in 2007 when we were working out the details, 
we looked very closely at the consumer, the beneficiary, something which normally doesn't happen. We, we, this scheme was to be for the poorest of the poor to begin with, so the scheme had to be cashless. This guy could not borrow from somewhere and pay it in the hospital and claim it from the insurance company, virtually impossible. Even for you and I, to claim money from the insurance company is not an easy deal. So it had to be a cashless health insurance scheme. This was not that big a problem because there were indeed, both in India and abroad, a number of cashless health insurance schemes. But the second point was very, very important. Most of these people who were trying to benefit were illiterate. Hence, the scheme had to be paperless. Now, even today, there's no other paperless health insurance scheme anywhere in the world. And we wanted it paperless because the fine print of the insurance papers that you and I would have seen, it was difficult for this man to understand, so we wanted this scheme to be paperless. This was the biggest challenge that the scheme faced. And third, finally, most of the people migrated from one place to the other. People migrated from Bihar to Punjab, Haryana, from UP to Punjab, Haryana, from Chhattisgarh to Maharashtra. And you all would know there isn't any other scheme where you could carry the benefit from one state to the other. Now, I couldn't ask this poor man that when you do go out of the state in search of employment, don't fall sick because thereafter your health insurance will not be covered. So this was a challenge. We had to have these benefits portable. So these were the challenges. Fortunately, we were in a situation where we could handle them. Smart card came handy and I'll tell you briefly about it. This is what the scheme is. Total sum insured about 30,000 rupees. Now, people have asked me this question, why 30,000? We, we said we'll start with 30,000 and see whether it works or not. Experience in past five years tells me that it does work. Then three existing diseases covered. This is something which doesn't normally happen in a health insurance. In fact, the Obamacare now picks it up from RSPY. They have included it as one of the health care as one of the pre-existing diseases. Quite inc coincidentally, I was in Washington uh, 15 days ago, and while addressing some of the advisors of the Obama administration at the uh, Brookings Institute, they were very happy that this part has been taken up in America as well. For us, it was a necessity because I couldn't have gone to millions of people and found out what their pre-existing conditions were. So we had no option but to opt for this. It is now called a virtue, but we didn't do it consciously. The sum of the credit that we got in scheme is more accidental than anything else. Then coverage of health insurance related to only hospitalization. People have criticized this scheme, why only hospitalization? But as, that, as it happens in this country, and as we have discovered also, we have to be very careful about moral hazards because there would be a tendency to misuse the scheme. Even this component is being misused, so you have to be careful and hence only hospitalization because the, we could impose better checks. It is a cashless coverage for hospitalization with virtually no exception, so everything gets included. If you are hospitalized, it gets covered. There is a provision of smart card, provision for pre and post hospitalization one day before and five days after, and we have a very token amount of 100 rupees as transport allowance. This again was debated quite a lot, but ultimately we decided that we'll start with 100 rupees and see what happens if there is a need, we will rethink. You know, this scheme, started imperfectly, it's improving, it's still imperfect. And we believe that if we try it for anything perfect, first of all, it would be very impossible to evolve that sort of a scheme. It doesn't exist anywhere in the world. And then there's always scope for improvement and learning. That's what has happened in the scheme. And beneficiary pays rupees 30. This was criticized a lot in the beginning. But we felt that the moment you take 30 rupees from his pocket, he'll be informed that he's covered under insurance. I don't know whether you're aware that most of the health insurance schemes have failed in India because the beneficiary was not aware that he's covered under the scheme. The moment you take 30 rupees out of his pocket, he can't forget because for him 30 rupees means a lot. And then he values what gets given to him. And finally, since he has paid 30 rupees, he calls me to question. He demands that service. He can drag me to a consumer court. So it imposes a responsibility on us. The smart card cost is borne by the center. This is briefly how it happens. I'll quickly run through it. There's a state nodal agencies. It prepares a BPL data. Now, don't ask me what BPL data is because I won't be able to answer those questions. We ourselves have problems with that, though it is improving with the scheme. This data, when it gets to us, it's put on the website. It's sent to Government of India, put on a website. In the meanwhile, the state nodal agency selects an insurance company through a selection process, which is an open tender bidding process. The selected insurance company takes up health insurance providers, sorry, health service providers, the hospitals. They set up a district kiosk, a call center. I would have loved to spend time on this system of field key officer, but owing to paucity of time, and I think you all must be pretty tired sitting here through in the day, I'm skipping this, but if you have a question thereafter, I'll come back to this, because this is one of the most robust security systems